Shara TV, you're welcome back. Unfortunately, Adela had to step out quickly to attend to a rather pressing emergency, but the discussion continues. We still have on the line Lance Guma, editor for Nihanda Radio and TV. And we also have in the studios um, our very own Fungai Maboreke. And we are inviting you, the viewers, to chime in on plus one nine one seven two eight four, not one. 9811. So I'll repeat that number. We, we flubbed it the first time. The number is plus one nine one seven two eight four nine eight double one. 9811. Fungai, let me, let me come to you at this point. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what is wrong with Mugabe? We hear he's 91 years, he has to leave, whatever. But some Zimbabweans are saying, yes, he's 91 years, but we love him. What essentially is wrong with Mugabe? I think at this point, uh, it's the length of time that he served. I think people do not uh, have any many problems unless they directly have a link with him. But uh, it's the length of time and this continuous uh, insistence of trying to keep running the country when you can clearly see that uh, you failed on all sectors. So. Uh, People want to try and understand why, at that age, why, after enjoying such an illustrious career, I mean, he was one of the uh, leading champions of, of the liberation struggle in the last mm -hmm. years, you know, and he garnered a lot of respect. And the pity is, at this age, at this time in his career, he's going to have to go out with all these and ask questions, in, in, in why, in what is wrong with him, okay. you know, and what happened. So it's, it's, it's that... Uh, uh, um, it's basically the term issue. The term issue plus also the, you know, there, there, there's so many misdeeds that happen when you're in charge. So when you are in charge, people will always also point out. I, I feel like he's surrounded by very many ill advisors and of late uh, they're, they're, they're really greedy because what they're positioning and setting their trenches in the hills in the trenches is to try and protect the wealth they've amassed. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwean peoples probably do not care if they can just go away and keep quiet mm -hmm. with all that wealth. Okay, we have a caller on the line right now. Let's reach out to our new caller. Hello caller. Hello, Oyin, o Oyin Loye. Oyin Loye live. Oyin Loye, can you hear me? Okay, we lost Oyin Loye. So let me go to Lance at this point. Lance, I'm going to, I'm going to um, put the same question I put to Fungai to you. What, as a journalist, what essentially do you find is a problem with um, President Mugabe's continued stay in office? Uh, I think what Zimbabweans want is the opportunity to freely select the leaders they want. They do not want someone who is a, a permanent fixture in their lives. The other big problem that we have is supporters of President Mugabe are the equivalent of trying to apply lipstick to a frog and then say, oh, look, uh, this is pretty. We have a problem in that we have a leader who has or was responsible for genocide in the Midlands and uh, Matebelelen provinces. 20,000 innocent people were killed by Mugabe's regime. We have a leader who, in 2008, when he lost elections to the opposition, um, was responsible for the murder of uh, close to 500 opposition activists. So there is an argument to be made that uh, not only is this regime resorting to undemocratic means to stay in power, this regime is, is, is full of people who should be in jail. I mean, that, that is the blunt truth. You have, if you were to look at the composition of Zimbabwe's parliament right now, you would have close to 50 MPs who are directly or indirectly responsible for the murder of opposition activists. I mean, it, it's shocking what uh, this regime has been able to get away with. I can't think of a country where you have a leader responsible for 20,000 deaths in a genocide. 
remaining as president for that long. Mm -hmm. And and it's 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 really I don't know whether it's it's a testament to our forgiving nature as Zimbabweans. I don't know whether it means we are passive, but I think other Africans look at us and they are astounded at how we have allowed him to remain where he is for so long. Mm. Okay, so let me stay with you, Lance. Um, th there's been also a fair bit of commentary about the nature of security and, um, you know, the kind of protocol that was afforded uh, President Mugabe. Are you worried as a Zimbabwean that your president was mistreated or not afforded the kind of security that, let's say, Secretary of State of the U.S., John Kerry, was afforded? I think they are clutching at straws. I mean, honestly speaking, um, um, Adiola, um, not only is she a woman, but I, I don't think, I mean, if you look at the way they, they, they responded to this interview, you would think maybe uh, Adiola had manhandled Mugabe. Um, all she did was ask questions that even our own information minister asked um, in 2005. There is no difference whatsoever um, in, in the questions asked. So I do not think simply asking someone when they are going to step down uh, why there is no democracy in Zimbabwe can constitute a, a breach of, of security. So mm. for us to even follow this thread that, oh, Mugabe was not afforded uh, uh, the same level of security as, as John um, Kerry or whoever they're comparing them with, I think that's clutching at straws, and that is missing the point, uh, you know, by miles. Mm, okay, yeah. but Fungai, let me let me ask, mm -hmm. let me put the same question to you. But I want you to look at it in this context. Um, the journalists got really close, right. and if touch wood, there was some kind of diabolic intention, mm. that would have looked really bad. Right. What are you concerned that President Mugabe wasn't, up, you know, given the kind of security that presidents deserve? Well, I'm not aware of what kind of security you know they deserve or must have i also am not aware of the kind of protocol that's presented when they're ex exiting a building but i'm not also aware that they should be you know spaced out from receiving journalists and their questions i'm not aware of that but at this point i'm staying here in new york city i've seen uh, you know heads of state be pelted with tomatoes. I've seen heads of state being pelted with eggs. I mean, it happens a lot in Europe as well and other places. It's always African, gen uh, you know, leaders that we have this unexplained fear of them. So I think the discussion is really not about that. We've seen George Bush get flung by a shoe in Iraq at a time where it was heightened security, you know. Mm. Uh, during the Saddam Hussein invasion, the, 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 the Iraq invasion. We've seen Secretary Hillary Clinton duck a shoe. We've seen all these kind of things uh, where some of them have been slapped. But uh, to say the security was not enough or not, we're not too sure. But the question is, are they accessible to the media? And if they are, how do they then turn to receive the media? and treat the media. So maybe the question is the opposite. So are they willing to talk to the media? So sometimes when these questions are flung, if you read the headlines, they're screaming, ambushed, then you'd think, oh my God, what did they do? What was involved? Did they drop him? Did they fall? You know, it's actually the journalists who are being pushed out of the way. Basically, some people will say, I mean, we always, in places where heads of states and high-profile figures are, you ask a question, the handlers will say, not now, here's a business card, call us, call us, you know, or I'll answer two questions and leave. So it's probably the other way around. That's mm. probably the question that you might ask. Okay. Now, Lance, um, I'm, I'm going to go on this tangent again with you because uh, I'm just um, kind of... Uh, if you will, just amplifying what I'm reading from social media and other forms of media about what's really going on. Now, some are projecting that um, a Nigerian journalist, quote unquote, trained in the U.S. or trained by the U.S., has no business in the internal affairs of Zimbabwe. That should be the Zimbabweans, you know, arena to determine how, however long their president stays or what, what, whatever the issue may be. What's your reaction, Lance? 
I think the world is a, a global village, um, and only ostriches who are burying their heads in the sand can advance uh, that argument. Um, the reporting has no, has no boundaries, which is why we've seen uh, CNN's Christian Amamfo uh, interviewing Mugabe on CNN, which is why a few weeks ago we saw Stephen uh, Sarkar from the BBC uh, interviewing uh, Jonathan Moyo, our own information minister on uh, BBC Hard Talk. So I, I don't think you can uh, put uh, geographical boundaries on, on, on journalists. Uh, I think um, even if we were to do uh, that, Adiola still asked the same questions that an independent-minded journalist like myself would have asked if given the opportunity. Mm. Um, can I? Um, no, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, because up until now, Mugabe has only been granting um, um, interviews to the state media. Mm. On rare occasions, he, he spoke to uh, CNN, and we saw the type of interview it was. It was aggressive. Um, he was being asked hard questions. And then, of course, we saw Dali Tambo's interview in South Africa, where it was more like a, a PR exercise. And I, and I think that is the problem we have. They are so used to bootlickers. They expect everyone to run around them and ask, uh, you know, very passive questions. Mm. And the moment they get uh, tough questions, they start looking for someone to blame. Right now, they're trying to deflect attention onto Buhari's or, or the Nigerian administration and blaming them for, for lax security. I mean, what would have happened if Mugabe had answered Adiola's questions? Would we have had all this drama? It would have just been let me, a one let me, on one. Let, me, let me ask you at this point, Lance. As a journalist yourself, do you just focus on Zimbabwe and Mugabe, or do you also s spread your tentacles to look at other, other parts of not just Africa, but also the world? I am very confident to state that um, whatever situation we have in, in Zimbabwe, it's not a one-off one you know, situation. We definitely have other parts of the world where we have issues with leaders staying more than a certain, you know, an, an agreed term, for instance. Do you, as a journalist, spread your, 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 your tentacles to cover all of these? Oh, yes, we do. Uh, the, the world, as I said, is a global village. Everything is interconnected. Um, on Nehanda Radio and Nehanda TV, we do focus on issues around Africa. Um, particularly if you look at the dynamics, um, the Burundi crisis, for example, there's so many similarities um, to what's happening in Burundi and what's happening in Zimbabwe. And so when we cover stories on Burundi, they, they, they hit, they hit um, a core mm. with, with our audience because, okay. you know, there they are fighting against the third term and here we are, you know, the, the, the president is in his sixth term. Um, okay. We focus on issues to do with South Africa, for example. Um, we have uh, close to three million Zimbabweans um, who are going to South Africa and are living and working there, um, seeking greener pastures. So anybody who says um, Zimbabwean journalists should stick to Zimbabwean issues is, is really a, a dinosaur uh, that, that is, you know, caught in a, a, a times are changing. Okay. And I, I don't think we can All think right. like that. Let me announce an, the new number to call on since we're having issues with the, the, the one we put out. Um, initially, if you want to join this discussion, viewers, the number to call now is plus one six four six five five nine six six four zero extension three six four six five five nine six six four zero extension three. Okay, so Fungai, mm -hmm. let me let me pick your thoughts on this as well. Don't you think security is important, though? I mean, I hear all that's being said. But I, I'm looking at the situation where someone with another motive apart from asking an innocent question would have got really that close to, to Mugabe. How embarrassing would that have been for the Nigerian government? Okay, like I said, I, I think I'm, I'm not too well versed on what type of security. I know uh, President Mugabe is the chairperson of the AU. He's also the chairperson of SADC. I'm not too... Sure, I was actually surprised to see that somebody was talking to him through an open window, which meant that his own personal security were okay with the kind of security that had been provided at the venue. Uh, I, I would want to say that that does not happen in Zimbabwe uh, like that often. 
I mean, when he travels, you have to get out of the streets. You have to stay out and, you know, be where you are. So I was actually surprised from the beginning of the video where Shoore is speaking to the president through an open window, you know, and he was smiling and comfortable and happy. So I'm thinking they, security was well taken care of. That's what I, I, I thought. And some, most of the time I also have this misconception that, you know, when you approach, get that close, his own personal security would obviously manhandle you. you okay, know now let's take this caller and then we'll come back to the discussion. You're welcome to Sarah TV, caller. Caller, are you there? Hello. The phone lines are playing tricks on us today, and so I'm going to go back to my um, guest panel, co um, presenter, interviewer, right. until we're able to actually um, get the, the, the guest, the viewer calls coming through. Um, let, me, let me ask you again, um, Lance. So um, you, you are an editor. I, um, I believe you are a trained journalist and all of that. And now this has brought up the issue of journalism versus activism. Are they good bedfellows, journalism and activism? Hello, Lance. Good question. Um, particularly for someone like me who is in, who is in exile. Um, I, I think I cannot d discount the fact that my own personal circumstances are a result of the government that we have in power. So in a sense, as, as exiled Zimbabwean journalists, we, we have become um, the story, but still, our role is clear. Our role is to get information. Our role is to get leaders to be accountable. And uh, our role is to be the voice of the voiceless. And, and in what Adiola did, I think she ticked all those boxes because uh, I don't think she was abusive. I think she, she, she asked all the questions, as we said, that need to be asked. And, you know, when, when, when they are focusing on issues of security, uh, you know, something that you are asking about, Perhaps they might have legitimate grounds to, to be unhappy with the Nigerian administration. But that does not take anything away from the validity of the questions that were asked. Um, there's an issue that has been discussed, that of, of, of respect. Yes, it's African to respect our elders. But if we were to be technical, simply asking someone when they are, not, when they are going to step down does not necessarily become disrespectful if you are a journalist. That is a legitimate question uh, to, to, to ask. So yes, um, there is activism, journalism, but I, I think as long as you stick to respectable parameters where you are asking the right question, you are not being abusive, um, I, I think it's legitimate. Mm. Fungai, mm -hmm. at the end of the video, we heard Adela asking for Zuma. Some people are saying there is perhaps a certain uh, plan on paper to actually target African leaders and humiliate them. Um, you obviously are not privy to any such thing, I would believe. But what do you think of this assertion to start with? Is it even legitimate? Yeah, I think that video is unedited from what I know. Uh, uh, it was just put as raw as it was. But uh, one would believe that this is obviously, you know, uh, the major plan. But we had Odiola here, and obviously she should be best, uh, the best person to, to, to answer that. But uh, like she said, she's uh, done this kind of thing with, with uh, you know, President Jonathan himself of Nigeria. Uh, at the United Nations, this is sometime last year during mm. the National, uh, you know, the General Assembly, and she encountered him on the streets, and obviously his handlers and security were trying to push Adiola away, but she kept going and asking him, and at the end he, he succumbed and he started answering the questions, and once that was done, he, she, he went. His way she went One down. in the heart for President Jonathan, for sure. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me come to you, um, Lance, at this point again. We're, we're getting ready to round up, but um, 
Let me, let me ask you, what, what about those Zimbabweans who feel like Mugabe should stay? I'm, I'm sure there, at least there is a ZANU-PF party with Zimbabweans as members of that party. And um, I'm also personally friends with some Zimbabweans who have also said to me that they actually want Robert Mugabe to stay. Do they matter? Um, this is why when you first asked me what is wrong with Zimbabwe, I, I said all Zimbabweans want is the ability to choose their leaders freely. If in a free and fair environment, the majority of Zimbabweans say no, old as he is, 91 years old as he is, we still want him there, fair and fine. That is democracy, is it not? But we do not have that scenario in Zimbabwe. Mm. We have people being abducted. We have, we go into an election with a, a voter's role that is a, a state secret. I mean, the last election we had in 2013, that gave Mugabe his current term. Nobody has had access to that voter's role. I mean, what, what country in the world goes into an election with a voter's role that is a, a state secret? Mm. So these are the things that are, are a problem. So those who, who are in ZANU-PF who are saying, what's wrong? We want him there. Um, we are saying, or Zimbabweans are saying, um, free and fair. Go into an election that is free and fair and re-elect him. Okay. I, I think that is all that, that you know, it's, it's not rocket science. People right. just want the ability to go into an election, not face the prospect of being abducted, tortured, or killed because of uh, your political affiliations. Okay, we and and we're not it. talking assumptions. We have a, a long line of examples of what happens to people who are in opposition okay. uh, circles. Unfortunately, yeah. we have to leave it at this point, Lance. But before we go, let me ask you, why are you in exile? Uh, it's, it's pretty obvious uh, why I'm in exile, and it is pretty obvious I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing if I was in Zimbabwe at the moment. Um, I, I spent uh, almost eight years of my life working with uh, SW Radio Africa, um, a Zimbabwe station based in London. Um, we, we've had our own WikiLeaks where we've leaked uh, the um, state security agency's um, official employment list. So I have a million reasons why I pretty much know I wouldn't be welcome back home. Okay. So, Fungai, final thoughts. Okay, so I'm thinking that um, these are some of the questions that need to be answered, the ones that Adiola was asking. Uh, of course, there are issues of security, there are issues of harassment, there are issues of ambushing a president. But also, I think uh, he also has the responsibility to answer some of these questions. Mm -hmm. And Adiola is not Zimbabwean. Adiola is just a mere enthusiastic, young, upcoming journalist doing her job. Is this going to happen again somewhere with somebody else? Who knows? But these are questions, you know that need to be answered. And I think if we can get that, especially the handlers of, of, of a 91-year-old, you know, mm. gentleman like Mugabe, they need to find better means in which they can communicate uh, certain things to, 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 to interested parties. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so very much, uh, Fungai Mabureke. Proud, proud, proud Zimbabwean. Thank you. And thank you, Lance Guma. Thank you very much for your time and your insights, Lance. Thank you um, for having me. This story will not go away today, I'm sure. We will continue having this discussion. And my only prayer is that we have it as dispassionately as possible and find the best way that will benefit the people of Zimbabwe and everyone else who's concerned about what's going on in Zimbabwe. Sarah TV, stay tuned. There's more coming. I say, roll it, shake it.